Welcome everyone to this virtual launch of Armagh City, Banbridge and Craigavon Borough Council's Recovery and Growth Framework. My name is Kitty Doran and I am delighted to be your host for this morning's virtual event. Like every corner of the world, Armagh City, Banbridge and Craigavon Borough has been hit hard by the pandemic. However, the strength in the local economy pre-COVID, including that strong entrepreneurial spirit, diversity across business, and world-class industries in life and health sciences, advanced manufacturing, and agri-food will ensure its recovery and growth. The Council is determined to do all it can to hasten the borough's recovery and set it on a path of renewed inclusive growth and prosperity. With that in mind, ABC Council commissioned KPMG to provide direction for an economic agenda of recovery and inclusive growth. The recovery and growth framework developed by KPMG sets out an independent view of the current context locally, as well as a series of options for the Burr's short-term recovery through to medium and long-term growth. Guests will be able to get a copy of the framework via link provided at the end of today's event. And so this virtual event will present the key findings within the framework and assess how council support can be best targeted to help recovery and recharge the area for the benefit of our people, our place and our future. This morning, I am delighted to have representatives from key business sectors within ABC who will explain how they help shape the framework and how the recommendations within it will help their businesses grow and their sectors flourish. I'm delighted to introduce our panel this morning. Roger Wilson, Chief Executive of Armagh City, Banbridge and Craigavon Borough Council. Ashleen Feeney, partner at KPMG in Northern Ireland. Trevor Lockhart, Group Chief Executive of Fane Valley. And last but not least, Adrian Farrell, Chair of the Business Partnership Alliance and Manager of the Meadow Shopping Centre. Before we kick off this morning's session, a word of welcome from Lord Mayor Kevin Savage, and then we will go straight to Roger Wilson, Chief Executive at ABC. Hello everyone, and welcome to the launch of the Council's COVID-19 Recovery and Growth Plan. We come to you at a time like no other in the history of our borough and indeed the history of the world. While we face stiff challenges in the future, we are all in this together. Council has been working hard with key partners to help and support our borough and we will continue to do so in the future. We are here to help our community and our businesses through this difficult time and are firmly committed to you. We have articulated clearly in our COVID-19 Recovery and Growth Plan our ambitions and commitments to the recovery and development of our council area. A range of business stakeholders and government representatives have shaped the evidence and informed the actions that will support our businesses, traders, urban and rural communities. Our plan clearly outlines our intent for the year ahead, our commitment to actions that will lay new foundations to ensure all of our people and our places have a solid and positive plan upon which to rebuild our future together and ensuring inclusive growth for everyone who calls our Ma City, Bombridge and Craig Alvin home. Thank you for joining us today as we launch our recovery and growth plan. Stay safe and keep well everyone. We are Arma City, Bombridge and Craig Alvin. We are a warm diverse and entrepreneurial home. This is our people, our place and our future. People born with character, strength and resilience. With a passion for community, friendship and laughter. People that work hard but enjoy living. Who succeed through enterprise and determination. A place where work and life exist with synergy steeped in culture and vibrant history. 
a place where people and business thrive, where futures are built and talent is nurtured. A future transforming through technology and innovation, fueled by investing and believing in dreams. A future building on shared visions, partnerships and commitment. Excited by the opportunities of the global stage. We are ABC. And these are our people. This is our place. And here is our future. To me, ABC is socialising. For me, ABC is about community. To me, ABC is agriculture. To me, ABC is family. To me, ABC is education. ABC, for me, is home. We're waiting for you. Come join us. Hello everyone and can I give you all a warm welcome and thank you for tuning in to the virtual launch of the ABC Recovery and Growth Framework. I wish I could greet you all in person and uh, hopefully that day isn't too far around the corner. But today I want to talk about our borough and more specifically our people, our place and our future. We all know that we're living through a moment in history. We meet in a virtual world like today, and I know it's often difficult to try to think beyond the next lockdown. We're learning to adapt to our changed circumstances. We as a council have adapted to deliver frontline services through remote and socially distant working. But more importantly, we must now adapt to drive recovery and growth. This crisis will end, and we must have the vision to shape what happens when it does. That's why the recovery and growth framework, which we're launching today, is so important. Let me commend everyone involved in the massive amount of work that has gone into it. It's a really impressive achievement indeed. It provides a firm set of aims upon which we can build. It sets out options for growth, not only how we might achieve short-term recovery, but also how we can set out along a path to long-term inclusive growth and prosperity. This comprehensive framework has been shaped, researched and produced during a pandemic by local industry and business leaders, major employers, elected members, statutory partners, council officers and the team at KPMG. It invites us to focus on our many strengths but it also identifies challenges, many of them all too familiar, and how they might be resolved. So what of our people? Well, the people of Armagh City, Banbridge and Craigavon are committed to this region. We provide a resilient and robust skills base. As one contributor to the report said, we have a great talent pool that has been temporarily disrupted, and it is that talent pool which will stimulate recovery. As importantly, we are a people committed to constantly improving our area, our outcomes and our opportunities. The steely determination which has created the success this borough's economy is renowned for has not dimmed and in fact, if anything, it burns brighter. There's a young, energized and dynamic demographic in our borough and a culture of community engagement and self-help. There is a vibrant and visionary entrepreneurial spirit that has been the backbone of our growth and success to date. Combined, all of this will be of crucial importance in our recovery. Our place and our council is composed of a number of distinct urban and rural areas, each with its own unique characteristics, each with its own strengths. And it is those strengths which prime this region for recovery and growth. Our challenge will be to establish a clear vision of who we are, this collective of urban and rural. We are the food heartland and we are the economic engine 
of Northern Ireland. We are home to some of Northern Ireland's biggest employers, to most of Northern Ireland's top 10 largest companies by turnover, a roster of some of Northern Ireland's most significant inward investors, our key employment zones of Carn, Seago and Charlestown Road in Craigavon collectively contribute to over 2.7 billion GVA per annum to the Northern Ireland economy. Our contribution as a borough to the Northern Ireland economy is almost four billion pounds per annum. We are home to over 8,000 VAT registered businesses and a young and skilled population. Our people have the strongest entrepreneurial spirit and flair for business, with over 245 new startups established since the start of the pandemic. We are ideally located on the east-west and north-south economic transport corridors. We have a wealth of tourism potential, not least in our natural surroundings of lakes, parks, towpaths, as well as the beautiful and historic city of Armagh, Ireland's oldest city, and the ecclesiastical capital of Ireland, but also in Banbridge, where Game of Thrones will be celebrated at the Linen Mill Studios. We have much to celebrate and to be proud of, but there have been unaddressed problems and they remain to be resolved. I'm talking about poor infrastructure and connectivity, both physical and digital, limited land for development, and the economic challenges to our town centres. Through this new recovery and growth framework and using levers, including the Mid-South-West Regional Growth Deal and the other city and growth deals as well, we will address those blockages to ensure our people and our borough can reach its true potential. We have strong networks and close relationships with a wide range of partners. Building on those relationships to flex our collective power is important to deliver on our commitment to recovery and ambition for growth. Our future and our potential is enormous and we should not underestimate the opportunity that lies ahead. We lead the way in three sectors that have achieved so much already and have so much more to offer. I'm talking about agri-food, health and life sciences and advanced manufacturing. These are the jewels in our crown and reflect government's focus for future economic growth. Add to this the regeneration possibilities that can be achieved by investment in new and emerging technologies, by embracing the green and climate agendas and changing the way we think and do things to create a sustainable future. Digital transformation, connectivity, globalization, these are all going to be key. But there must also be support for innovation, for research and development, and for new skills opportunities. And throughout all of this, there must be strong public, private, and third sector partnership with collective goals. All of us united behind a shared vision and ambition to drive inclusive growth and prosperity. So where do we go from here? Well, the recovery and growth framework presents a roadmap to recovery over three years, how we first respond to the crisis, manage through a period of uncertainty and identify opportunities and then adapt to a new world. The longer term investment plan centers on infrastructure, on driving urban regeneration and rural development, on supporting education and training, on enabling technological developments and on supporting regional competitiveness. The framework provides exciting examples and case studies of what has been achieved in other parts of the world. As one of the report's contributors states, confident leadership is going to be key. Armagh City, Banbridge and Craigavon Borough Council will provide that confident and bold leadership and we will do so with your support. The task is not easy, but the benefits and the rewards for our borough and for all of its people will be worth it. Be assured, we are confident and we are committed. We are creative and we are courageous in our plans for the future, a future which promises to be bright. So it's time to roll our sleeves up, get focused on the plans and the actions that will deliver 
on this ambitious framework. Roger, thank you for setting the scene and also what a wonderful video illustrating what a fantastic place Armagh City, Banbridge and Craigavon truly is. It was lovely to see a focus on our people. You've just outlined a very powerful ambition for recovery and growth for the borough. And then again, ABC has always been an economic powerhouse, contributing almost four billion of Northern Ireland's GVA. What do you think, Roger, has led to the success across the borough to date? Well, I think, Katie, uh, you've already picked up on one of the key points. Uh, for me, there's no surprise that the borough owes its success to its people and their resilience and the commitment that they have. And our borough itself is really distinct and it's got lots of unique aspects which make us both diverse and interesting. And that's a really good thing uh, that we all have in common is a spirit of community, a commitment uh, to the area, hard work, you know, determination, those sorts of uh, factors. But when I think back uh, to the year that we've just been through and that we've all experienced, you know, I think of all of the local people who have pull together to help, whether it's been in a hospital or a medical environment or in the wider community to try and help the sick, the vulnerable, uh, those in need. Uh, it's been a really tough time for our business community, but I also think of all of those companies that have rolled up their sleeves, take the likes of the agri-food sector who have kept our nation fed and the other parts of industry who have kept the engine turning during some really difficult times. Look at our council staff. We've had to deliver so many frontline services that were essential every day. And we've had to repurpose how we've delivered other services during the pandemic. So I suppose for me, the success of the borough is about the people, their commitment to where they live and to where they work. Look at the businesses that we have that could be located anywhere in the world, but they have chosen ABC as their home. And after their initial investment, we find that they continue to reinvest and that creates further employment for uh, the supply chains as well. As a result of this, uh, you know, our companies are known as uh, world leaders and they dominate right across uh, the globe in those major growth sectors that I, I was talking about earlier. And we have proven that we can be successful at a local level and an international level. So. For me, it's about the people and their commitment to uh, the borough. They're at the, the heart of it all. And now that we have the framework, uh, it's about moving towards that short-term recovery and then the longer-term growth. And look, Roger, as you said, um, ABC is a place that's very unique and it has a number of key strengths which differentiate it. Now that you have this framework in place, what is the next step in the process and how will you build on the momentum which this framework will generate? Yeah, well, look, Katie, for me, again, we, we've got so much to be proud of in this borough and the framework sets out uh, the next steps for us about the recovery and then the growth, the long and the short term uh, in it. I touched in my uh, opening remarks about partnership. And the first thing that we need to do is to continue with our partnership working to build on the strong partnerships that we have, whether that's with government, government agencies, Invest Northern Ireland, Tourism Northern Ireland, Strategic Investment Board, the business networks that we have and the strong connections we have with business, the schools, the colleges, the universities, our startups, our entrepreneurs, uh, our cultural sector, our community sector, and the wider diaspora who again are, are spread right across the globe. So partnership for me is, is gonna be a key element of it. Secondly, we need to promote and shout more about who we are and the successes that this borough has uh, and leverage the power of our private sector. We've got trailblazing companies, uh, established and startup companies in this borough. So we need to work more closely with them to turbocharge our local economy and to grow it at scale. We have played in ABC our part in the success of the Northern Ireland economy to date now we need to make sure that government recognises the role that ABC plays in the wider economic success of the region and to make sure that their strategies and our strategies are completely aligned. 
So that means we need to use a whole range of different levers uh, that are at our disposal, whether those are fiscal or, or non-fiscal, and make sure that we invest in the right infrastructure, whether that's uh, urban regeneration, rural development, looking at and enhancing you know, skills and the, the education and the training agenda, technological developments, uh, so that we can improve our overall regional competitiveness. And then for us as a council, we will continue to invest in our spaces and places. Quality of life, health and well-being are key to any local economy. And anybody who knows anything about the work that we have been doing, you look at the major investment that we've put in, whether it's new leisure facilities, uh, parks, open spaces, uh, new play parks. Uh, so we have been trying to do our bit in investing in that wider infrastructure to make this a place that people will want to invest in and live in. So we will begin to emerge from this COVID pandemic eventually. And we have to be ready to take every opportunity to recover quickly, grow sustainably. So I suppose I would be encouraging everybody who's uh, watching uh, today to log on to the link afterwards and get a copy of the framework and to come and join us and uh, to work with us. Thank you, Roger. Um, you know, there's a lot in the framework. And as you said, it's really important people log in and, and get a copy of that. And look, I just want to turn now to Ashling Feeney, partner at KPMG, who led the work to develop this recovery and growth framework. So Ashling, you led the team which carried out the research and analysis for this framework. Can you tell us a little bit about the process? Who and how wide did you consult? Sure. Um, good morning, everyone from across Borough and beyond who has joined us. I'm absolutely delighted to have this opportunity to provide you all with a short insight into the work that myself and colleagues um, have undertaken um, in conjunction with the, the council officials. And this work really underpins that recovery and growth framework being launched this morning. So let me set some context. Some three months into the disruption that COVID brought to the daily working and personal lives of citizens, communities, urban and rural, the council are acutely aware of the impact the global crisis was having on regional and local economies, lockdown related unemployment, business closures, and indeed extended economic uncertainty. So at that time, they commissioned KPMG, a team comprising strategy and economic advisory specialists to set out options for a pathway for growth from that short-term recovery to the longer term prosperity, prosperity for all. The team at KPMG already were informed by the abundance of socioeconomic stats and recent economic analysis available through, for the local area, including indeed the regional economic strategy for Mid-Southwest that was subsequently launched last September. So our work was very much forward-looking, grounded in reality, as we were very mindful that local government in Northern Ireland have limited financial resources and revenue generating powers. And therefore, any future growth needs to be rooted in collaboration, something that you're going to hear a lot of this morning. And that collaboration across local government, central government, and very importantly, where the borough certainly leads the way is that collaboration with industry and business and indeed education and pro providers. Because it's important that at local government level, they influence the frameworks and the policies that will really drive that economic and inclusive growth in the longer term. So our work was very much dominated by two key work streams. First and foremost, that was engagement with stakeholders, business leaders, particularly the major employers across the borough, that entire geography right across the three main urban centres, covering all those key sectors that, that Roger's already touched on, particularly food and agribusiness, the advanced engineering and manufacturing, the health and life sciences, and indeed leisure and tourism and retail. And also engaging with those anchor education and healthcare providers in terms of Southern Regional College and indeed the, the local acute um, hospital. And then also engaging with central government who hold a lot of the budgets um, that can be deployed to really drive that growth, particularly in terms of the Department for the Economy and its agencies, Invest NI, Tourism NI, and also as Roger touched on infrastructure, engaging closely with the Department for Infrastructure and indeed the direction of travel in terms of the infrastructure investment strategy for Northern Ireland. And also indeed agri-food with the Department for Agriculture and also then indeed our, our local communities in terms of Department for Communities. And that engagement with each of those stakeholders, because it was one-to-one -one engagement, was twofold. First, it was very much taking the pulse in terms of the insights there and then as to what the short-term actions were needed 
um, to address those, those um, impacts. And then also then looking for the, the longer term in terms of planning for that new reality out over the longer term, you know, what interventions were needed that would really shift that economic and social dial. So key themes coming out of our engagement with businesses were, no surprise, skills. How do we actually position the skills for tomorrow's business needs in terms of infrastructure, digital particularly, and future proof in any case um, for roads investment, as we all are aware of the green agenda, and also in terms of that need to really accelerate innovation and automation um, in terms of our many businesses, because that is going to be essential if they are to really thrive in the new reality. So then in terms of our second work stream, that very much focused on the development of that roadmap to recovery. And that is where we at KPMG brought our thinking that we bring to many of our clients, both government and corporate across the globe, and we applied that to the borough. And it essentially was a framework which highlighted the overall cycle of recovery during the COVID pandemic. And that framework has really got four phases. First, that reaction, the response to the crisis, the short-term measures. Then indeed resilience, how you manage to cope through that extended uncertainty. And indeed recovery, identifying those opportunities that play to the strengths of the borough. And then indeed that new reality, how you would also not just support economic growth at the local level, but support regional competitiveness at the NI level and on that UK and wider stage. And that framework has a lot of resonance when thinking back to about people and place, the geography. So our outturn roadmap comprises a mix of short, medium and long-term options. And for many of the options to be fully realized, the council really and truly needs to collaborate with central government, industry and education providers. Collaboration very much is the future. Ashley, thank, thanks for that. And um, I think, as you said, we're, we're going to hear that word collaboration quite a lot as we work through those short term measures of recovery into that long term growth. Look, the borough is the largest in Northern Ireland and delivers almost four billion in GVA each year. If you could, Ashley, touch on us some of the fundamental strengths you identified, which are going to help it recover and grow and also maybe lay out a number of the interventions which could really support the local economy in ABC and, and focus on what does the borough need to do to achieve that long-term growth? Sure. Well, look, as part of our work, it was really vital that we fully understood and reflected the borough's strengths in the recovery framework proposed. The borough is clearly a very resilient patch, home to those robust people and capable of achieving tremendous things. We, we all know, we probably don't shout often enough about some of the great successes of the, of the great businesses in the area. However, the one thing is the borough does need to give greater clarity on its proposition, what the area wants to be known for. And as Roger touched on earlier, um, you know, the borough has great strengths across a number of sectors. And I think for a borough of ABC scale, it can realistically aim to stand out globally in two or three sectors. Um, and based on our analysis, those three sectors were very clear in terms of they were sectors that were indicative and relative long-term growth potential and where the borough has real world-class representation and they were, as, as Rogers touched on, the agri-food, the advanced manufacturing and health and life sciences. So we let me turn the spotlight on agri-food for a minute. Agri-food is so prominent locally as the backbone of ABC's food heartland However, many of the businesses in the sector are now in much need of operational transformation and significant automation. And businesses at the moment with reserves already pressed in terms of all the response to COVID and safety measures, et cetera, we really now need to look at the importance of that agri-food sector and look at actually the supports that we can give to businesses, capital funds, enhanced tax incentives to really allow them transition to that automated robotic world. Also, <laughs> sectors less volatile than some of the other sectors. And if and when the focus can move beyond commodity into branded premium for export markets. It is a borough that produces some of the best food in the world. We all know that, but we need to take that story to the global stage, particularly to those premium consumers around the world. Our story is deep in nature, sustainable, healthy attributes of the food and beverage products grown and produced locally. The food story's full substance really needs to be captured, capture the premium in terms of those products produced locally and that they truly deserve. The food story full of substance to capture those premiums and it is now the time for the borough to drive a coordinated effort, I believe, at a regional level 
to develop an agri-food strategy. And I also believe that it's important that local government partner with our industry leaders, delighted to have one of them here today, and government in the development of that strategy that balances the needs of our environment and our economy. I know there's lots of hard work and challenging conversations to deliver such a strategy. However, I believe it is worthwhile and will also assist in sure vibrant rural communities across the borough. I mean, even working with my colleagues around the globe, and even only across the border in the Republic of Ireland, there's some real game-changing work happening in terms of the decarbonisation of the agri-food sector, working with the primary producers right through to the processors. And, and I do believe that is something we could do here in this borough. And also in terms of looking at actually that innovation that I touched on, potentially hosting ag tech, ag protesting robotics, and also forming that analytics, you know, in a form of a centre of excellence. There are so many opportunities there. Obviously, we, we can't do all of them, but I think we really do need to focus in terms of the importance of our agri-food sector. Also, in terms of advanced manufacturing, you know, there's a current review of the aviation aerospace strategy happening in Northern Ireland. We know how important that sector is in terms of employment, but how now, how with all the the impact that the actual pandemic has had in that sector. How do we reposition those skills here in the borough and indeed Northern Ireland to assist the sector um, transition and potentially help decarbonise aviation? There's huge potential. Also, in terms of urban regeneration, we need to invest in terms of particularly our mass city tourism potential. There's huge opportunity there. And then finally, I think we really need to focus on shovel-worthy projects that will shift the economic dial not just shovel-ready projects, shovel-worthy, ones that are actually not going to just drive growth locally, but at that NI level. I think that is really, really important in terms of going forward. So there's no doubt that many of us work will, or that many of us will work will have changed. But what we should do now um, to dissuade the borough of the huge potential on their doorstep and the opportunity they now face to make a lasting positive impression for the generations to come. Thanks, Ashleen. Um, yeah, and it, it's a really timely reminder of just how strong the borough is um, in a number of key sectors. But before I move to Trevor to talk specifically about the agri-food sector, I just want to ask you, Ashleen, in relation to the green agenda, how does the borough, just very briefly, how does the borough ensure growth and sustainability can go hand in hand as part of this recovery framework? I mean, firstly, what I would say is it's going to require a fundamental shift in thinking at the regional level. A clear framework is vital. The borough cannot do it alone. We actually need all of our leaders right across government at the central level to really have that mindset in terms of the sustainability agenda. You know, we, we don't have that regional strategy at present. However, we do look forward to the publication of our energy strategy and indeed clean air strategies later this year, and also hopefully a strategic program for government and also our economic recovery plan. But I believe there's opportunity. If, if the borough now focuses on sustainability to drive growth, it needs to be embedded in every single investment business decision. All investment decisions being taken through that net zero lens. I mean, we've seen in terms of ESG, environmental, social and governance rise sharply up the boardroom agenda. Indeed, the KPMG Global CEO survey undertaken late last year, it identified climate change as the number one challenge for business growth, whereas three years ago, it wasn't even in the top five. So in determining the borough's recovery, we now have a chance to improve not just the borough, but northern Ireland's longer term environmental fortunes, accelerating a range of net zero emission projects. But it is actually as well the S of ESG that has become even more significant to businesses as we see societal considerations. The ethical provenance of supply chains have a huge impact on commercial success. And surely when we look to our own, you know, agri food sector in the borough, that presents a golden opportunity to really do that. I believe sustainable businesses as well will drive better financial performance in the years ahead. I know many have challenged me in that, but brands that are purpose-led will sell better. And also, whoever finds those tech solutions for climate change and invests in those will be a future winner. So maybe on a closing note, I mean, one opportunity potentially for local government to show that leadership that, that Rogers talked about and that confidence is actually to lead the way in terms of the retrofit of civic buildings across the borough. Um, you know, that in terms of present opportunities for innovation, also in terms of much needed construction um, work, 
as well, and potentially also in terms of bringing down the overall energy consumption. So there's huge opportunity, um, but it really needs to start with that fundamental shift in thinking that we have a sustainable green agenda in terms of our mindset. Thanks, Ashleen. Um, look, I'm going to move to Trevor, uh, Chief Executive Group, Chief Executive at Fane Valley. And Trevor, it's been quite a year for the agri-food sector and this spur in particular, the food heartland, which has truly fed the nation. I think as a nation, we all have so much more respect for and commitment to our local food producers. So let me ask you, Trevor, um, look, the Burr is fondly known as the food heartland of Northern Ireland, and the sector is incredibly important to ABC. Can you maybe just share with us how the sector has performed over the last year throughout the pandemic? Good morning, Katie, and good morning, everyone. The agri-food sector has proven to be remarkably resilient uh, through the pandemic to this stage. It has generally performed well despite the fact that firms have had to make significant changes to their workplace practices, which have brought on additional cost and in some cases contributed to lower levels of productivity. But one of the positives, of course, in a pandemic is that people still need to eat. Uh, now, lockdowns and social distancing restrictions have changed quite significantly how people have purchased and consumed food. Uh, we all know the impact the pandemic has had on our food service sector. Uh, and those food firms who were more orientated towards servicing that sector have had to adapt and change their business models quite quickly. Yeah. And those businesses who supply a retail customer base, they have enjoyed quite significant uplift in the demand for their products. One of the other dynamics we have seen connected with the disruption caused uh, by COVID to global logistics and supply chains is that there has been less food imports arrive at our shores. That has in itself contributed to a higher demand for local food products and that in itself in turn has brought a welcome boost to farm gate returns. So the food sector certainly hasn't escaped the impacts of COVID but perhaps it has performed better than we would have first feared. And look, Trevor, we heard Ashling talk about the green agenda there. How does the agri-food sector pivot to meet that sustainability agenda, whilst at the same time ensuring long-term growth? Sure, well, the first thing to say and to acknowledge is that I believe those twin objectives are achievable. Uh, what we can't do is accept that in pursuit of achieving our climate objectives, we export our food production or our greenhouse gas emissions to another country. That might serve some national political agenda, but it doesn't address the global challenge that we're trying to confront. For me, the uh, solution to this lies in three key responses uh, from the agri-food sector. The first one rests on the need to improve the productive efficiency of agriculture. Uh, and that leads us towards a widespread adoption of the agri-tech and the precision farming techniques that Ashling alluded to. We need to ensure that we are targeting our inputs to agriculture as efficiently as possible. That's good for the environment and it's good for the profitability of primary agriculture. Secondly, we also need to improve our land management strategies and adapt land use in order to be able to capture more carbon. And thirdly, we need to improve our adoption of renewable technologies and the wider bio. So it's not at all impossible to envisage that in the future, even at farm level, carbon in itself will be something which will have a tradable and value associated with it. The important thing is that we are proactive in our response to this challenge, because otherwise we risk greater regulation being enforced upon us. And the incentive is there, because if we can differentiate Northern Ireland food products as being amongst the most sustainable in the world, that will put us in a great place on the global stage, which we rely upon to export our food products. 
Yes, um, pro proactive collaboration, proactive leadership um, needed, Trevor. And look, you've, you've touched on some of them, but you know, in your own words, what would be the current challenges facing the sector and also those opportunities and, and for the borough in particular that is the food heartland? Yeah, well, the, the growth in the agri-food sector over the last 20 years has been largely achieved by producing more so more milk, more pigs, more poultry, and more eggs, to name just but a few. The environmental considerations that we've just alluded to means that that's not a viable platform for our growth for the next 20 years. So we therefore have to shift our focus onto adding value to our food products, to premiumizing our products, and to exploring the functional properties which can be developed in food to bring together those benefits which are increasingly being made to the health of our people. And this creates an opportunity to collaborate with our health sector, with our scientific community, to better understand how we can derive those functional properties of food which impact on people's diet and in turn their health and well-being. The old saying of prevention is better than the cure will be coming increasingly to the fore as our health services encounter the challenges that they have never done before. This will require a step change in the innovation and the research and development within our sector, but there is a significant price to be derived commercially for companies if we can get it right. One of the other significant issues for food is labour availability. Uh, and certainly we have developed a significant reliance upon the migrant workforce. They're a great our companies, but we know that under the post-Brexit immigration rules, that that pathway will not exist to the same extent in future. So to address our productivity challenges and to address our potential labor availability challenges, we have to automate our processes we have to become smarter, we have to become more innovative in how we address those challenges. So when you look across the ABC area and when you look at the common themes that apply to agri-food, but they equally apply to our advanced manufacturing, our health and life sciences, and the many other sectors represented here, we need to have more R&D, more innovation, more automation, and an investment in our skills base so that we can catch that rising curve when we come through this pandemic. And I think those are great foundational pillars for ABC Council to be focusing on within their future looking agenda and one which the business community will greatly welcome. I'm confident that certainly if we can work collaboratively with Council and other agencies to get this right, you know, the opportunities for the food companies in this border to not just grow on a national level, but to trade increasingly into the global marketplace is something which is quite exciting. But thanks, Trevor. And um, it is fantastic to hear about the opportunities for the sector. And I think everybody will agree with you. There's, there's a global opportunity waiting for this sector. Um, and so look, last but not least, I'm going to turn to you, Adrian Farrell, Chair of the Business Partnership Alliance, the overarching business representative group in the borough. And look, Adrian, as we've heard, the borough is home to over 8,000 bat registered businesses, and it has a very unique offering in the local towns, villages, and even Armagh City. So, Adrian, in your role as chair, you will have had an ear to the ground of the retail sector. How has it pivoted to meet the changing needs of shoppers during the pandemic, and the innovations which the sector has embraced during the pandemic, digitalization, delivery, will those stick in the future? Uh, good morning, Katie, and good morning, everybody. Um, thank you for the opportunity to, to speak. Um, yes, I want to pay tribute, first and all, foremost, to our businesses in the borough for the resilience they've already shown. Um, it was a concern back March, April time, that businesses that had closed, would they ever reopen, would some decide to just fold? And I was so encouraged that come June, so many of our independent businesses, so many of our businesses across the borough reopened and reopened in a safe way for their customers. So I think that has to be acknowledged first and foremost. 
Um, and I have to also recognize the measures that those businesses put in to make their shops, their businesses safe for consumers. Um, a lot of money was spent, a lot of thought, a lot of col- the word collaboration has already been mentioned. Businesses are ringing other businesses to see what they were doing to make their premises safe. And I think that is one of the encouraging things to come out of the lockdowns that we've had, that businesses are keener to work together, to share information, to share knowledge on finance, et cetera, and that's to be welcomed. From a digital point of view, you only just have to go online and spend a minute browsing to re- recognize that many of our businesses in the borough have already taken great strides to strengthen their online presence or indeed to start an online presence. Um, just a few minutes ago, I, I was just checking, you've got Donaghy's Shoe Shop in Banbridge selling online. You've got the bottom drawer in Porta Down. You've got Tracy's Herbatique in Armagh, who whilst they can't trade, are highlighting tips for their customers and colouring, et cetera. Uh, and then you've got Sinead's Florist in Lurgan selling online for Valentine's Day this weekend. So uh, very, very quickly, it's apparent that a lot of our businesses have reacted have taken the steps to start to, to address perhaps gaps in their online presence, and that's to be welcomed. Um, equally, and it's coincidental perhaps, but the Department for Economy's announcement last week on the three million pounds towards e-commerce grants, again gives our businesses in the borough an opportunity to tap into funding to further enhance their online sales. And I would encourage all businesses listening to look at that and to take advantage of that funding that's in place. You say, will it stick? I think customers will have an expectation that it will stick. Customers have got used to ordering online, to either click or collect or get goods delivered to their homes. And businesses have already invested in that, whether it's an additional delivery van or workers to pick goods for orders. Uh, That won't change whether, whether, whether whatever else happens, I think customers will want to see that flexibility, that choice that they have to either physically go into a business to shop or to browse online and buy online. So yes, that's my expectation going forward. Look, I, I absolutely agree, Adrian. I think our local businesses deserve a huge shout out for the resilience that they've shown over the last 10, 11 months. And look, one of the other legacies from the pandemic is that working from home for at least part of the week will become the norm for many people. How can ABC Burr take advantage of the stay-at-home worker who's keen to shop locally? Yes, well, that's already very apparent, um, the, the impact of the stay-at-home worker. Um, the park and ride in Porta Down, just up from my office, uh, traditionally used to have 300-odd cars in there. You're lucky if you get 20 now at the moment. So there's an audience on our doorstep that uh, we have to reach out to. And I think to be fair, business already is. Uh, Those that are able to trade during lockdown or out of lockdown have adjusted their trading hours. There's no doubt that um, trading patterns have changed. People working from home are coming out more on their lunch breaks to buy goods at their local deli or buy sandwiches at their local supermarket. Um, And also in the evening times, it's already apparent that uh, when they finish the work at the evenings, they want to get out, stretch their legs, get away from their home environment for a a time. And and it's up to us as businesses to react to that, to adjust our our opening times to to match the desires of our consumers. And that's already taking place. You know, there's um, already investment online to uh, reach out to those customers. And I think we and council have a, a strong uh, part to play in ensuring that the pounds that those customers are saving it by working from home, that we tap into that and then try and ensure that that's spent within our town centres. I think we need to make our town centres more uh, accessible to those people working from home. We need more green spaces and that's something we need to look at going forward. We need to make our town centres more appealing, more cleanliness needs to be highlighted. Uh, we need to do best possible standards for that so that uh, when people do come out of their offices, that our town centres are more inviting, more appealing, and that the businesses that are there can react and, and support and supply the needs of those uh, consumers. I think we need a, a flexibility in our planning going forward. Obviously, um, you know, sandwiches, lunches, etc. we need to be more fleet-footed to respond to those desires. And change of use, for example, we need to react quicker to uh, the consumer's needs. And those are all things that we are prepared to work with council on 
to uh, to support those consumers. And, and once again, Adrian, collaboration is going to be key to ensure all of that can be achieved. Look, I want to talk to you a little bit uh, about the High Street Task Force, which has been set up by the government. Um, you know, from your knowledge and understanding of the sector, what would you like to see prioritised within the task, task force strategy for the recovery and sustained future of our all-important high streets? I think what I would like to see prioritised first and foremost is town centre first as a, as a policy. Uh, we need to direct as much investment into our town centres as possible. Um, the executive have already come out of a, a very positive scheme, the gift voucher scheme. Uh, I know it's been postponed till after April, but when that scheme comes through, that's an immediate short-term response to uh, getting pounds and pennies spent in our town centres, and that's not to be underestimated. Um, so I would encourage that. I would encourage for, further um, a look at the rates rating system. Department of Finance has already done a review on rates, and we would encourage them to bring that forward as quickly as possible. Um, we're facing an online battle. Um, you just have to look at the purchases of Boohoo and ASOS with some of our traditional high street giants to tell you where things are going. And we need uh, to have a, a, a fair playing field, and that's obviously rates. Um, we've had a very generous rates holiday uh, up to the end of March. And I know a lot of my colleagues and myself will be calling on that task force to do all in their power to ensure that at the very least, the next six months, we have a continued rates holiday. Thank you, Adrian. Um, and indeed, thank you to all of our panellists here today. Before I hand over to Councillor Brian Pope, Chair of ABC Borough Council's Economic Development and Regeneration Committee to close this event, I just want to turn to you, Roger, and ask you, how would you sum up the confident intent of the council and of all the other stakeholders in the borough? Thanks, Katie. Um, before responding to that, I, I would agree. I think uh, the session today has been really interesting and the comments of Ashley, Trevor and, and Adrian have been very insightful and even more for us to be able to take away in, in council and uh, to reflect on and to be able to, to work more closely with uh, our, our key partners. But I think for me, the, the work that we have undertaken in the recovery and growth framework, along with our commitment to ensure that there is a robust recovery and a longer term sustainable uh, growth that will uh, lead to uh, what we are calling an inclusive growth for everyone, uh, that demonstrates our intent uh, as far as I would be concerned. But the key thing we've heard about this morning as well is this word of collaboration, partnership, uh, we can't do it alone. Uh, so we have to work with everybody. We have to have that shared vision, that shared agenda, and for us to be able to lead. So it's not about other people taking the lead. It's about us all taking the lead and driving forward. And certainly uh, council is committed uh, to playing its part in that. I do think that once we get to the other side of COVID and we move into that recovery, there will be opportunities which will await for us. So for me, while this has been very, very tough and there's no denying that, I think the positivity and the future is, is bright for the ABC borough because of what we've talked about today, the strengths that already exist in the area and those give us a good platform and springboard for us for the future. Thank you, Roger. And I wish you and everyone in the borough every success as you build on the strong foundations and confidence that are right across this dynamic borough. Now let's hear from Councillor Brian Pope, Chair of Council's Regeneration and Economic Development Committee. Stay safe and thank you. Hello ladies and gentlemen, thank you for watching and thank you to those who participated today from all across the borough, one which we call home. Today's session has highlighted the impact which the COVID-19 pandemic has had on our businesses and community, and how we as a council have indicated how we will do to ensure the growth and recovery is inclusive of all our citizens. Council is here to create the right conditions, working with our partners to bring that future into focus for our mass city, Bambridge and Craigavon, as soon as possible. While we are aware of the challenges we face in the short term, 
We are excited about the possibilities for this borough in the years ahead. I would like to acknowledge all who have contributed to the development of this action plan. The team at KPMG, the councillors on the Economic Development and Regeneration Committee, the council staff who will implement the plan, and to those in industry and government who are committed to a regional balanced economy. Together we will recover, and together we will create success with a sense of optimism and commitment. Thank you for being a part of ABC, and stay safe. We are Armagh City, Banbridge and Craigavon. We are a warm, diverse and entrepreneurial home. This is our people, our place and our future. People born with character, strength and resilience. With a passion for community, friendship and laughter. People that work hard but enjoy living. Who succeed through enterprise and determination. A place where work and life exist with synergy. Steeped in culture and vibrant history. A place where people and business thrive. Where futures are built and talent is nurtured. A future transforming through technology and innovation. Fueled by investing and believing in dreams. A future building on shared visions, partnerships and commitment. Excited by the opportunities of the global stage. We are ABC. And these are our people. This is our place. And here is our future. To me, ABC is socialising. For me, ABC is about community. To me, ABC is agriculture. To me, ABC is family. To me, ABC is education. ABC, for me, is home. We're waiting for you. Come join us.